600 pounds of muscle. They are driven by a singular, primal need. Hunger. They have found a family and a parent who will not back down. This is not a hunt. This is a siege, and the prize is survival itself. The Lion Pride is not just a group. It is a finely tuned killing machine. Jaws built to crush. Claws designed to rip. And a tactical coordination honed over generations. Tonight, that coordination is frayed by a desperate, gnawing hunger. The Cape Porcupine. It is a fraction of their size, a rodent in a world of giants. But this is not just any porcupine. This is a parent. They are the entire reason for this standoff. For the lions, this is a meal. For the porcupine, this is the end of its genetic line. Thirty thousand spears. This is not fur. This is a modular biological shield. Each black and white quill is a masterpiece of defensive engineering. The porcupine's strategy is to make the predator impale itself. These barbs mean the quill goes in easy but it does not come out. Every attempt to remove it only drives it deeper. Tearing muscle, grating against bone. It is a weapon that punishes the attacker long after the battle is over. The battle begins not with a roar, but with a test. This is not a wildebeest calf, and her confidence is a liability. This is the first line of defense, psychological warfare. Porcupine's defense is 360 degrees. It pivots on a central point, a living turret. This is not chaos. The lioness is being drawn into a predetermined kill zone. Not a kill strike, but a test of reaction an attempt to gauge speed. All 
the porcupine's power is concentrated in its haunches and the quills are angled backward, ready for impact. The lioness recoils, but it's too late, is now a pincushion. She roars, not in anger, but in agony and confusion. The barbs are already at work. But the pride is a collective. The other lions have watched. They have learned. They will not repeat the same mistake. Now, they begin the real siege, attacking in wave. This is the classic pincer movement, designed to split the target's focus. It pivots left, it feints right, it charges backward. Each repelled attack costs the lions more than the porcupine. A second lion gets a quill, this time in the shoulder. The porcupine is fighting a dozen skirmishes at once and winning all of them. Minutes stretch into an agonizing stalemate. This is now a war of attrition, a battle of endurance. Their hunger is a deafening roar. This small rodent is forcing the kings of the savanna to hesitate. But the porcupine is also paying a price. The porcupine is tiring. Its movements are a fraction slower. One of the large males, having watched from the periphery, now stands up. He is not interested in the paws. He has identified the porcupine's only vital weakness, the head. All he needs to do is flip it. They pierce the tongue. They embed in the soft palate. The lion's primary weapon has been turned against it in the most brutal way imaginable. But the barbs hold fast. This is the takedown. But the predator is the victim. The confidence of the pride is shattered. The cost has become too high.
what we have just witnessed is not an escape. It is a definitive, tactical victory. The porcupine did not win because it was lucky. It won because its strategy was perfect. This was a total mismatch of force. The lions possessed overwhelming power, superior numbers, and coordinated pack tactics. On paper, the porcupine family should not have survived the first 30 seconds. But the battle wasn't fought on paper. The lion's greatest assets, their paws and jaws, were rendered completely useless. Worse than useless, they were turned into liabilities. When we analyze the outcome, we see the brilliance of the quill. It is a weapon that requires no aim. It requires no offensive strength. It relies entirely on the predator's own aggression. It is a perfectly executed counter-strike. This is survival's endgame. The quills embedded in their paws will make walking agonizing. Hunting will become impossible. The quills in the male's mouth, if not... Its family is safe, for now. What happens when the only path to survival is to go on the offense? And it is hunting the master of all venom, the King Cobra. Next time on Survival Warriors. The between the mongoose known for its and the hispanic it's the deadly male egyptian king. cobra a split second of tension before the inevitable clash